I think a very common situation is you see a job ad and you ask yourself, do I fit this position? Am I close enough to the description in the position? And this is what I want to talk about in this video. How do you decide that? And do you understand why certain position descriptions are the way they are? Applying for faculty jobs or similar positions is a lot of effort. You need to prepare, you need to uh, write all the documents, you need to tailor the documents, you need to make sure that you just don't send out a boilerplate application because that is usually a waste of time. So really doing it right takes a lot of effort. So therefore it becomes an important question for which position should I apply in the first place? How wide a net should I cast? Should I apply to anything that remotely fits me? Or should I really wait for the position that seems like it's been written just for me? The answer is definitely you shouldn't do either of those. Neither should you apply to everything that remotely fits you, but you definitely should not wait until there is a position where you check all the boxes. That is actually a mistake I see very often that people do not apply to opportunities that would be really good for them because they are afraid they don't meet all of the requirements in the, pro in the description of the ad. The bottom line is that close enough is sufficient. If you are close enough to that position description in the ad, you should apply. Now let's pretend you see a job ad and it, it generally fits you, but you're not basically checking all the boxes on all of the different ones and needs and desired items in the job description. Why should you still apply? So in order to <laughs> understand why you should still apply, you need to know the following. A job ad, a job description, is always the end result of a discussion in the department that's hiring. And in the department that's hiring, there are you know, usually different camps that have different interests and they want to put certain keywords in that job description. And so this is why most job descriptions, and I'm sure this doesn't happen every time, but often enough to be relevant, you see like a whole list of keywords, for example. The candidate should ideally work on this and this and this and this and that. And, you know, normally not a single person can uh, really fit all these requirements. But you have to understand that the job ad was really a compromise. It was It's the result of a process that you see. You don't know that process. All you see is the job ad. But it's very important to understand that that came from somewhere. This means, since there is a bunch of people that had their input into this job ad and got their favorite keywords put into this job description, this means you don't need to worry if you don't fit every one of these points. Because in the end, really nobody will. It's not the point of this job ad. This is like a list of wanteds, but it is very clear that not a single candidate will fit all of these, generally speaking. Yeah. So this is why you shouldn't worry when you don't meet all of the points that are mentioned in the job ad. This is so important because I always see people not applying to jobs because they find like one of the words or one of the expectations, this is not what they do. But this is really a mistake because you should apply. If you have a strong record, I think you can very easily com convince people in the search committee that you would be a co good candidate for this position because you fulfill a lot of the points maybe or at least a part of the points, uh, but not some others. But that is basically almost expected. And also remember that you will have then some people in the search committee or in the department, they will root for you because you are basically in their camp or you check the boxes that they wanted to see checked. So don't underestimate these dynamics either. So they can be very important. Um, as I mentioned, these job ads are like a result of a compromise. So that is definitely important to realize. The other extreme is just applying to everything. And that is also not a good choice. There is basically two reasons for that. Basically, if you are seen applying to everything and, you know, often word of this gets around, then people will tend to not take your application seriously anymore because like this guy or this person is applying everywhere, uh, they are probably not serious. 
But the second point is more important. If you are applying to everything, this will either cost an enormous amount of your time if you're doing it right. But mostly what happens, people apply you know, across the board to all kinds of things that remotely fit them. Then they don't make the additional effort that is really required to move to the top of the shortlist for the position because you cannot spend that much time on uh, this particular application if you're applying to a hundred other jobs. It's simply not possible. So you're not careful enough. Um, you haven't done your research properly. You haven't tailored your cover letter, your research statement, your teaching statement. You haven't basically tailored all these materials sufficiently well so that they will catch uh, the attention of the search committee member. So basically, that is not a good option either. If you're just sending out boilerplate material to all kinds of ads that remotely fit you, I mean, you will not have a chance unless you just publish in Nature and Science. I mean, I'm just kidding, but basically then you're just wasting people's time if you haven't taken the time to customize the materials for the position. So the bottom line really is do apply to jobs even if you're not a perfect fit. Don't censor yourself. Don't be overly critical in terms of your fit for a position. But on the other hand, don't just indiscriminately apply to every job there is that remotely fits you. That is also not a good solution. So basically the bottom line is there is a, a Goldilocks zone where you should apply for jobs. And that is basically, can I convincingly show that I meet most of the requirements in this job ad? Do I basically check most of the boxes of what they want, or at least some of them? Do I fit the general topic? I mean, if they want a community ecologist, can I convincingly make a case that I am a community ecologist? Or if they want an ecosystem ecologist, can I, for example, really make a strong case that I am an ecosystem ecologist? If you can't make that point for like the, the denomination of that particular position, then I think it's not a good idea to apply. But if you can make the case, then do. And if the job ad says like I'm a community ecologist and they should work on, I don't know, symbiosis and, and pollination and you're working on, let's say, a symbiosis, but that is not pollination, unless it is explicitly stated that this is needed, then do apply because then it means they're casting a wider net. They want um, a person that works on any kind of symbiosis, for example. Often there is also just this long list of things should maybe use this technique and that technique and the other technique. Then, you know, if you haven't in your research statement, you could, if it makes sense for you, make the case that in the future you're planning on doing this, for example, even if you haven't done so so far. Only, of course, if you mean it. But just as some examples, right, you know, there will be so many things listed in the job description generally that you will unlikely to meet them all. Then just make a case in your research statement that is an obligatory part of your um, application package. How will you actually address these points if you haven't done this yet, right? I mean, the, the, the cover letter is also a point to make this, but you really make this in more detail in the uh, research statement where you explain to people how you exactly fit that job description. That is your opportunity to explain things in a narrative. Right. The final point uh, that may be worth making is that there is also a bit of a hint in there in how you might be able to make your research program so that you fit more positions. If your research program is such that you are inherently more polyvalent, like you can, um, maybe you can be an ecosystem ecologist and a community ecologist because you work at the intersection of these things. And, you know, maybe you work on certain organism groups or you work on certain ecosystem compartments, then you know, you make yourself automatically more polyvalent than if you are super focused on just one tiny subset of things. And that will increase the um, opportunities for faculty positions you can apply for in the end. That doesn't mean you should be all over the place, <laughs> just to make that clear. Uh, it just means that you have opportunities to interact with people in a, in a wider range of things and that you can see your work being placed in broader contexts as well. Um, because, for example, you work at intersections of topics that will increase, typically, your chances to apply for more jobs. Right, so I hope you found that useful. I think um, this is often done wrong in one way or the other way, as I've explained, so make sure you do it right with your uh, series of applications. With that, good luck with your job hunt. See you later.